trees can have values internally, in addition to have the leaves. So, if you have a value at your root, such as 5 here, and at the leaves, you also are going to end up having values in the middle of the tree. Why is that? Well, within this tree, there's another tree right here, and it has a value at its root, 3. And what about the right tree of that one? Well, it has a value at its root, 2. Okay, so we call these internal values or internal entries. And when people talk about trees, they talk about each subtree within it as a subtree or as a node or as a vertex. There's just a lot of vocabulary for these things. So be warned. Different people might switch back and forth, including the course staff and including myself. Okay, so what is this tree that I've drawn? Well, it's a Fibonacci tree. There's the first Fibonacci number, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and the sixth one. And some of these are repeated throughout the tree. So in order to represent this, we're going to use a class. The tree class has a constructor, which takes the entry at the root of the tree, and then the left branch and the right branch. Left and right should either be none or trees themselves. We set the entry, we set the rift and we set the right, and we're done. So let's keep this one nice and simple. We could add additional methods in order to make sure that it displays nicely and this sort of thing, but we'll leave that for the lab. Okay, so how do I construct a fib tree for the Fibonacci number n? Well, if n is one, we'll return zero with no other branches. If n is two, we'll return one. Otherwise, we need to construct the left tree, construct the right tree, and return a new tree that sums the left entry and the right entry to get the nth Fibonacci number and then keeps around the left and the right. We can code that up pretty fast. So everything up here were trees represented as tuples and that was just an exercise to get us started. I think it's more effective to talk about trees as a class. which takes an entry, a left tree, and a right tree. And sets the three instance attributes of every tree. Now we're gonna define fib tree of n as looking and seeing if n is 1, then we return a tree with just the first Fibonacci number. If n is 2, we return the second. Otherwise, we build the left and the right. n minus 2 on the left, n minus 1 on the right, and we return a tree. So it should be the case that if I construct a fib tree for the fifth for the sixth Fibonacci number, which is five, and then I get its entry, I'll get back five. And if I construct the 10th one, then I'll get 34. Okay, let's do some tree processing. What if we wanna know how many entries there are in a tree? Well, if we've reached a branch that's empty, then there are no elements. Otherwise, we wanna count the entry that we have right now, and then how many entries are in the left and how many entries are in the right. So if we count the entries in a fib tree for the number of 6, we'll find there are 15 and for the number 10, we'll find there are 109. Now fib tree starts getting slow. If I look up 20, that was fast, but if I look up 30, 
Well, it takes quite a while to build this tree. And what's going on? Well, it turns out that the 30th Fibonacci number is 500,000, so a reasonably large number. And I've now created this tree in memory, which has 1,600,000 sub entries. Now, we built this whole thing out. It's pretty big, and that means our function is pretty slow, but at least we're able to represent it in a very small amount of code. 